everyone, Colton here and welcome to Comics Alliance. So we are living in the multiverse saga of the MCU. Loki, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, they were all just the beginning and we have yet to officially meet the big bad of the multiverse saga, Kang the Conqueror. But we did meet one of his variants, He Who Remains. That's right, He Who Remains is one of the many variants of Kang in the MCU. The Loki series teased that there were multiple Kangs throughout the multiverse who went to war with one another. So I think that it is likely that we will meet several Kangs throughout the MCU. And for example, the Kang that we meet in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania may not be the same Kang who's running the show once we get to Avengers the Kang Dynasty. And look, if the Kang character in his history confuse you, do not worry because you're not alone. This character has had several aliases throughout the decades, and he even shares a name with another time-traveling character in the Marvel Universe that is not even a variant of Kang. And on top of all of that that we're going to be covering in this video, I think that I may have found reason to believe that in the MCU, Kang is not only related to Reed Richards' Mr. Fantastic, like he is in the comics, but to borrow a theory from Screen Crush's Ryan Airy, I mean you're going to steal this man's theory. No, I'm borrowing it. We will need it. We think that in the MCU, every version of Kang may be related to the man himself. Are you Tony's stank? Okay, so like I said, in the comics and even in the MCU, Kang has gone by many names. I've been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler, a conqueror, he who remains. The character first debuted in 1963's Fantastic Four number 19. Nathaniel Richards constructed a time machine that resembled a sphinx. You can actually see this time traveling sphinx in the void at the end of time in the Loki series. Why did he design it to look like a sphinx? Well, he traveled back in time to ancient Egypt where he became known as Rama Tut. And he actually met a mutant, the first mutant in Sabanur, who would later go on to become another big Marvel villain, Apocalypse. Now, after his time in Egypt, Rama Tut re-entered the time stream and found himself in the modern day Marvel Universe, Universe 616. There he encountered Doctor Doom, and they teased at the time that Rama Tut and Doom may actually be the same person, or at the least, related. Now, this wasn't really ever touched on again, and in fact, it was later retconned. We're gonna talk about that here in a bit. But after his encounter with Doctor Doom, he was inspired to change up his look, and so he became the Scarlet Centurion. Then he'd later change his look up once again to become Kang the Conqueror. But that's not where it ends. Throughout the multiverse, there are multiple timelines, and universes where we have seen King the Conqueror take many forms and go by, like I said, many names. There's Victor Timely, a version of King that traveled to the year 1901. He made his way to Wisconsin and established the town of Timely. And really the whole reason he started this town was so that he could also start a robotics company within the town that would have a century to evolve and that he as Kang could then utilize in the future to fight the Avengers. And then we have another variant who went by the name of Mr. Griffin, a version of Kang who became trapped in the modern day Marvel Universe, unable to time travel. So he bought the former Avengers Tower and turned it into Kang Enterprises. Now, ever since we learned that the Stark Tower, then the Avengers Tower was being sold in the MCU, fans have been speculating for a long time on who bought the tower. Some fans have speculated that it could be Norman Osborn, and we're going to see the Avengers Tower become the Oscorp of the MCU. But another really popular theory is that we are going to see it become the Baxter Building, which is also, of course, the home of the Fantastic Four. But it's looking like it might not be either of those. You see, in the Loki series, it was revealed that the buyer of this tower, at least in one universe and one timeline, was Mr. Griffin. Here in the void, you can see the Avengers Tower with the logo Kang, Q-E-N-G. Now, let me be clear, it is not confirmed that a Kang variant bought the Avengers Tower and that in the mainline MCU, Universe 616, that the Avengers Tower is going to become Kang Enterprises. None of that is confirmed, but we do know that there is a new mysterious owner of the tower and we know that Kang is going to be the big bad of the multiverse saga, so it makes sense. It just makes sense that it will be Mr. Griffin, a Kang variant, who has bought the tower. 
Now, another version of the character is Immortus. We've kind of sort of met Immortus in the MCU, but you'll know him as He Who Remains. The MCU has combined the characters of Immortus and He Who Remains, but in the comics, they are two very different characters, and only one of them is actually a variant of Kang. Now, in the comics, just like we've seen in the MCU, He Who Remains controls the TVA, he created the Timekeepers, and he resides at the Citadel at the end of time. But he looks like this. And he is not a variant of Kang in the comics. Now, that is where Immortus comes in. In the MCU, this version of He Who Remains is heavily inspired by Immortus. And the characters are kind of similar. In the comic Avengers Forever Volume 1, Number 3, we hear Kang the Conqueror say this about his variant Immortus. He calls himself the Master of Time. Gardener of Time is more truthful. He prunes away branches deemed by others to be dangerous, reducing reality to a bloodless meadow. But that's not the way of warriors, of men. So from that description, you can see that the MCU's He Who Remains is also inspired by the character of Immortus, not only in design, but also in terms of what he does. And while the creators of the Loki show are currently saying that they simply combined the two characters for one character in the MCU, I gotta say that I would not be surprised if the Kang variant, Immortus, is revealed to have actually killed the real He Who Remains and took his title, making himself the ruler of the multiverse. I mean, after all, he is a Kang. And next up, we have Nathaniel Richards, Iron Lad. Now, Kang was born on Earth 6311, and one of the key differences between this Earth and Earth 616 is that this Earth never went through the Dark Ages, and with that being the case, it was able to advance far more quickly. Now, Universe 6311 reminds me a lot of the MCU's Universe 838 that we were introduced to in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This universe was seemingly taking place in the same year as the MCU's Universe 616, but it was far more advanced, likely because 838 also never went through the Dark Ages, just like 6311. So I think that in the MCU, Universe 838 is going to be taking the place of Universe 6311, and that Universe 838 is going to be where Kang the Conqueror in the MCU was born. I am so confused! And while we have yet to meet Reed Richards in Universe 616, we have met him in Universe 838, so we know that that bloodline exists in that universe. Anyway, back to Iron Lad. This version of Kang became Iron Lad when he traveled to the 616 universe after meeting his future self and wanting the Avengers to help him avoid this fate. He then formed the Young Avengers, but eventually he ended up fulfilling his destiny and becoming Kang the Conqueror. Okay, so another spot where the origins and the history of Kang the Conqueror gets really, really confusing Using is when discussing his relationship with Reed Richards. You see, Reed Richards' father was also a brilliant time-traveling scientist by the name of Nathaniel Richards. But these two characters are two separate characters. Let's call him Nathaniel Richards Sr. and then Nathaniel Richards, as in Nathaniel Richards the Kang variant. At least that's how it is in the comics for now. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I'm not entirely convinced that we won't eventually learn in the comics that Nathaniel Richards Sr., the father of Reed Richards, and Nathaniel Richards Kang, I'm not convinced that we aren't going to find out eventually that they are the same person. I mean, Kang has been traveling through the multiverse and through time back and forth for a really long time, creating splintered timelines, which creates splintered realities and alternate futures and alternate pasts. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the comics we eventually get a scene where Kang says to Reed, I am your father. Now, like I mentioned off the top, friend of the channel, Ryan Airy. Wait, isn't he like your boss or something? Shut up, we're friends. No. I am your friend, and I'm not even real. How pathetic. Anyway, Ryan has theorized that in the MCU, Kang may actually be a descendant of Tony Stark, and I actually think this would make a lot of sense. I mean, after all, Tony Stark is the one who discovered time travel in the MCU's 616 universe. And it's likely that Tony Stark discovered time travel in many of the Marvel universes. In fact, Tony Stark discovering time travel could be a constant throughout the multiverse, meaning that he is the individual in every universe throughout the multiverse, or at least perhaps in He Who Remains Sacred Timelines grouping of universes, perhaps Tony Stark and all of those 
realities is the one who discovers time travel. And while in the 616 universe that we've been following, yes, Tony Stark gave up the life of a bachelor. He settled down, married Pepper, had a daughter, sacrificed himself to save the world, but it is possible that out there in the multiverse, there is a Tony Stark who did discover time travel, but continued his life as a playboy. And I mean, let's face it, Tony Stark being responsible for the creation of a villain wouldn't be unheard of. And if there's going to be a time traveler going around the multiverse laying iron, if you will. That's disgusting. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Tony Stark and if he began the lineage that would eventually lead to Gang the Conqueror. Perhaps even a lineage that also leads to Reed Richards. What if Reed Richards, the quote, smartest man alive, is also a descendant of Tony Stark, maybe even his father. And maybe we could even see them meet because in Avengers Secret Wars, a giant multiversal crossover event, you know they're going to bring in Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. He is going to reprise his role. No, I do not have any inside information on that, but I just cannot foresee a scenario where they don't end up doing that. Hey, I thought Kang was also related to Doctor Doom. Now, like I said, they've pretty much retconned that. Turns out Rama Tut was just manipulating Doctor Doom, and I kind of take slight offense to that because one does not simply manipulate Doctor Doom, okay? But I'll allow it since it was a Kang variant. Now, the most recent information we have is that via a blood test, it was confirmed that all variants of Kang are related to Nathaniel Richards, Nathaniel Richards Sr. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if in the comics we get another retcon revealing that, yeah, all the Kangs are descendants of Nathaniel Richards Sr., but not he's their ancestor in the sense of, you know, like a familial thing. No, in the sense that he is the original Nathaniel Richards Kang, and perhaps he never went by the name Kang, but he is the original being that stemmed off, you know, different timelines and universes that resulted in all of these variants of Kang the Conqueror. That's not a bad theory. Thank you. So, there is the very complicated history of Kang the Conqueror in the comics, as well as a few theories for both the comics and the MCU. Let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. And if you're new here, please do feel free to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Join the Alliance, we would love to have you. And until next time, my name's Colton, bye.